Hello everyone, it's the Richard Lewis Show. I'm your host, Richard Lewis. The producer, Sam, is the floating voice in the background who will occasionally laugh over the course of the next two hours. Sure you know him. Uh, right, so right off the bat, I'm just going to say, Sam, I had a, I had a fucking $5 hot dog. He's right? up. No, listen, listen, It's uh, I've had it before. It, it's good, but it ain't sitting right today. They do these fucking... I know this place, they do these uh, $5 giant Atlanta dogs uh they're called which is like chili and fucking sweet coleslaw they're unreal they're like the size of a fucking french baguette with just a giant hot dog in the middle and it's just wrapped in fucking chili and everything. One of those. Is, remember when uh at e-league finals when they had that hot yeah. dog truck oh those were fucking banging but and those yeah it, well. it's and one of them all those, it like, sitting right. yeah 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 it just ain't sitting right did it so maybe i got a bad one so if i have to like break from the shore like to just go fucking puke or shit through the eye of a needle, you know, whichever one. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. So I'm just putting that out there right at the fucking top of the show. Uh, but, man, uh, let me let me tell you, this fucking uh, this NFL shit's getting real. <laughs> this know. NFL shit's getting real, dog. Uh, and this is how I know it's getting real. I wake up today. I'm like, right, okay. I had to go into the studio early to record some stuff uh, for E-League. And I'm like, you know. I'm just going to check the news. I'm having a cup of coffee. And there it is. Boom. On Twitter, right in the trending feed. Steven Seagal. <laughs> under fire, which is a fucking play on words. because that, that, Sorry, Under Siege. Sorry. Under Siege, which is a play on words because that was one of his movies. You know, the one where he's the cook. But he's really the Navy I'm not SEAL. Admit, I've never actually watched a Steven Seagal movie. I've always just watched clips and realized how much of a mess he is. So I've never decided to uh, never dedicate that it. much life to it. No? I like. There's never been. Uh, there's never been a moment in his life where he wasn't a fucking mess. That's what I sure. mean. But now he's an, now he's a massive mess. But like he did do a couple Key of mess. all right films, marked for death. Um. Even the, the titles just make them some shit marked for death. Yeah, it was a different time back then, though. Films didn't have to have good names. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could call a film just like two cunts having a fight, <laughs> and then people would just go and watch it as long as it had, you know, like nobody cared back then in the 90s and the 80s and shit. It was just, just call After it whatever. Bruce Lee broke out, everyone just wanted to see people hitting each other. So, so I'm like, what the, f you know. What could he have possibly said? Why, right? But then I thought to myself, it's not even about what he said, is it? Let's be fucking real. It, right, I'm just trying and understand, Sam. This is a political issue now. I don't know why it is. I don't know why a president tweeting and saying a bunch of bullshit at a fucking speech about the NFL has led to this strange, weird political division in America, understand I don't agree with Donald Trump's comments. I've said that. The idea that the President of the United States is pressurizing people to not express themselves and kind of put aside their First Amendment rights um, because he disagrees with it and he thinks everyone should stand and salute the flag. It's definitely troubling, isn't it? I mean, I suppose you could make people salute the flag at gunpoint, maybe, and then you're living in fucking yeah. China or something. You know what I mean? So I don't like it. Obviously, but the big question like that is: everyone seems to care so much. Like, I, there was a few people on Twitch chat talking about like, there is a big thing in America. You must respect the flag. Like, what? Fucking grow up, Lou. Like, it's a flag I understand. Day. It's about the country. You should be on about. They're not denigrating the country if they don't go and stand for the national anthem, are they? Nothing's happening. Sorry to burst the bubble. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah, I mean, Bill Hicks used to do a bit about it way back when. You know, I like to take my cues from Bill Hicks, and. uh he always used to do this bit where you know pe people would come up to him and and you know if you were if you were doing flag burning people would come up and go you know my daddy died for that flag and he's going oh, fuck it I just I just bought mine <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I I just bought mine. my my daddy died in Korea for that flag he's like, yeah mom is made in Korea <laughs> what do you know you know he because because that's that's the fucking distillation of the issue right like the flag is symbolic of all of the fucking freedoms. And rules and, and agreements and benefits that you have for fucking living in America, right? That's that's what it's all about. So I was fucking, you know, flabbergasted that like people would 
go that far. Like it's just that the issue is just this simple. If it's if you consider it important to you to fucking you know salute the flag and stand for the flag, do it. If you don't think in good conscience you can, don't. Exactly. And that's that. And you know, look, Don, Donald Trump definitely shouldn't be saying the wild shit he's saying and trying to exert some sort of weird presidential pressure on America's elite level athletes. It's made the issue way worse and more divisive. You got people who didn't stand apologizing. Um, in the form of uh, shit, I can never pronounce his fucking surname. You know the one. He did three tours of Iraq. And, oh yeah, I was just thinking of him. I can't remember his name either. The, he's at the Steelers. Steelers. Yeah, yeah, and he stood up, and uh, now he came out and apologized, saying he'd let his team down. And then you got Ben Roethlisberger, who's far from an example of a great dude, but by the way, uh, he took the knee with his team, and then said he was ashamed for doing it. So, and he was sorry. So it's again, it's just creating more pitfalls and division and minefields, and we just don't fucking need it. Anyway, that's that's not the fucking point. I think it's pretty clear where I stand on the issue. Not that it fucking matters one way or the other. But the question, Sam, is you're a news program, and I, you know this interview was on Good Morning Britain, so I use that in the loosest sense of the word. This is literally what people watch between having a shit in a shower, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's not high fucking informative content. And it's got Piers Morgan on it, who is some sort of like just insane beak face <laughs> mega prick. Like, <laughs> I am mega prick. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just unreal, isn't it? Like, he is thing, just a robot designed to make everyone hate him, I think. Yeah, yes, and occasionally like, so he'll have that one issue where he's all right and not a total fucking, you know, an absolute fucking yeah, moron. That's about what I mean, it. but he's such a cunt in every other way. It's just, he's just an irredeemable rat. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how he made it. I don't know how he fucking made it to, to be where he well, is. Well, the joke today. was that, like, everyone in the UK hated him, so you went to America and they liked him, and then they all hated him again, so he came back to the UK and he's just sort of dancing back and forth. But surely everyone's still like, I mean, I've never met anyone who says, yeah, he's all right. Maybe they just got over it. He's all right, Piers Morgan. Um, But anyway, so Piers Morgan hosts this show where he's seemingly loathed by even his own (laughs) co-host. Oh, yeah, I think she does. Yeah, she, I've been seen a few stories like, about it. Yeah, where she's yeah, like, "Oh, yeah. shut up!" <laughs> just fully, just like, "Get me the fuck out yeah, of this just, job." Yeah, it's beaming. Is this up, even Scott? worth a day rate anymore? And uh, anyway, Steven Seagal fucking goes on, and uh, you know, this is a meeting of the minds, isn't it? It's Frost Nixon for fucking <laughs> children. <laughs> Piers Morgan and Steven Seagal, like, what is going on? This meeting of minds. And they're talking about hot button topics. And of course, obviously, Steven Seagal's over in fucking Russia. He's in Moscow at the moment, which obviously Why makes is that it. Happening? He, just, he just hangs out there all the time. <laughs> Why does he think he's some Listen, sort of hard cunt, mate? Kim, Kim, I don't know. He, he's he's like, can someone have a word and tell him that he looks oh, well, like, exactly like they drew him in South Park? <laughs> like, that is what yeah. you look like in real life. No, well, I'll let you, you can bring that picture up while yeah. I'm while I'm talking if you want, if you want to show that, like, South Park absolutely yeah. fucking nailed it. It's terrifying. It's but here's the thing, isn't it? Kim Jong-un got Dennis Rodman, right? Yeah, As his yeah. Best. Uh, and Steven Seagal and Putin are besties, probably. <laughs> you know, right, horses think- together. Yeah, I think if you're a fucking dictator, I think you get, I think you get a friend, you know. I think you get like some fucking washed out, you know, washed up, burnt out, ex-famous retard as <laughs> like as a playmate or something. I think it comes to the territory. So anyway, why does Steven Seagal's opinion about this matter? Like, understand, I'm not saying he can't have an opinion. I see a lot of people say this. Like, you see these. Verified like liberal retards on Twitter do this a lot. They'll say, "Why does a why does a film star have an opinion?" Or you know, why, why do you get an opinion? And then they spend all day voicing their opinions. It's like you, everyone gets an opinion, right? Even but you. here's the here's the thing: if I follow Stephen Seagal on fucking Twitter, right? Sound. I expect to hear his opinion. And how to crack next. If I call him on a phone, expect to hear his opinion. 
If I go to see him live on stage with his blues band, which I'm going to play you some music for. Oh, yeah, mate. He's got I'm a go- blues we're going band. deep on Steven Seagal. People don't know. The <laughs> I didn't Seagal know we had a Steven Seagal bit. I thought it was no, just I'm, this. We've this, got an this entire all, segment. Mate. I've been preparing. Should have made graphics for this. Yeah, I've been preparing, mate. I'm going to let people know all about the lunacy of Steven Seagal. I'm keeping it real. We're, talk- we're going deep on this fucking absolute fuckwit. But anyway, he's got a blues band. And if I went to see that blues band live, maybe in between songs he might say his opinions about certain issues, I'd expect it then. What I don't expect is when I put on the fucking news, right, I, I want the news to interview people who know what the fuck they're talking about. Do you know what I mean? You may as well have a fucking telly to be there. It does. You know what I mean? And, and now, now Kermit the Frog, <laughs> Big <laughs> Bird, with his thoughts about the AIDS crisis in Africa. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what's he gonna? What's he gonna say that I can't figure out? He's not a fucking expert, is he? <laughs> He's just another fucking retard with just That's some hard. vague. Come on, what's Big Bird ever done to you? Well, you don't know. He might have done. Something. <laughs> might have done something. So, so, do you know what I mean, though? It's just, he's just another cunt with another... He's like any of us. He's just you another get, like, big bird, vague... mate. He's just another big bird, dog. You, 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 get, you get these vague, uh, you, you know, understanding of issues, and then you go out there and you fucking talk about it. That's fantastic. Do that down the pub. Don't do it on the fucking news. The news shouldn't be bringing you on, wheeling you into the house, everyone's living room. Here's what Steven Seagal thinks, everyone. Couldn't give a shit. So anyway, I forgot to turn my fucking light on. I was sweating off that hot dog so badly, I didn't want to put it on. So anyway, here's the fucking interview. Let's just get this out the fucking way. Uh, I'll tell you where the bit where he talks about the NFL is. Because first he talks about how like Donald Trump's got these like shadowy elements within the government that are stopping him getting shit done. Which kind of sounds like what happened to Obama for a bit, right? Yeah. Right, here it is. I wouldn't say shadowy, though. Aren't they very public? Oh, de- definitely not shadowy. Yeah. It's just obstructionist government. So, here we go. Go to like 1 minute 46 and just tell me if you think he's got an accurate sort of nuanced take on it all. So I'll, I'll three, two, one it with you. One, four, six. One, four, six. Sorry. Okay. Three. Try not to laugh. Like just that is ridiculous. Fit. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Three, <laughs> two, one, go. What's he wearing, me? I Why does he believe think in free speech. Bruce Lee? I believe that everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I don't agree that they should hold the United States of America or the world hostage by taking a venue uh, where people are tuning in to watch a football game and, you know, imposing their political views. I think it's outrageous. I think it's a joke. How about a pulse? Disgusting. And, uh, you know, I respect the American flag and, and I myself. Uh, you know, Are you in I Russia? I've risked my life countless times for the American <laughs> flag, and I don't understand or agree with Risk is this like, kind of behavior. Was he in the military? It's an outrage. There will be some people. I do so. uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's saying that, and think you sound like a great patriotic guy, but they'll also see you in Moscow and being very complimentary about Vladimir Putin, who many Americans believe... Right, you can get rid of that, Mel, because Piers Morgan tries to do his hard-hitting interview bullshit, and it's pretty fucking cringe. So, just, do you know what I mean? It's, that's, not the, that's not the issue, is it? Why are we talking about it still? What's, he say, what's the solution to the problem, Stephen? You know, like, what, we fucking, we just don't let people take a fucking knee? Are you saying because it's political and they're hijacking the league, like... If you follow that logic, right, I'm going to follow Steven Seagal's logic. It's that Steven Seagal who risked his life for the flag. <laughs> <laughs> what, in movies, man? Yeah, that's that's the thing. I think he is actually talking about movies. Because uh, he, uh, he's never served in the military. you got to understand that. He's <laughs> never served in the military. He did claim to be in the police for a while. But again, we'll, we'll come to that. Well, I will come to all of this. I told you, I've got bits. I've, got, I've done this stuff. He was also an environmentalist. I don't know what that's got to do with anything, but whatever. So 
it, it like if you don't want anything vaguely political in the NFL, just don't play the anthem at all. Because yeah. the anthem is itself, and this might make me wildly unpopular with some people, but the anthem itself is inherently fucking political, right? Of course it is. It's a fucking national anthem. It's bringing nationalism to the table. If you want to pull all the political stuff away and just play fucking ball, fine. No need to have all that stars and stripes stuff then, is there? You can't, you know, it, but it, as soon as that's in the arena, people feel very differently about America as a country, even people who live in America. I think it's great. That's why I'm going through the process of getting citizenship so I can live out here, you know. But some people who live in America don't think America is so great. Do you want to compel those people who don't think America is great to fucking pretend that it is? I don't. Let them have their fucking opinion. So, again, Steven Seagal. Let's, let's just talk about this fat fuck. Like, here's the first thing. So, you know how you brought up Bruce Lee? Yeah. Right, well, w there was this one time way back when Steven Seagal got caught lying about his relationship with Bruce Lee. This is true. This is how fucking mental this fat prick is. So, he fucking told the, this story about how fucking Bruce Lee... And Steven Seagal used to hang out with each other. And um, he was talking about how uh, Bruce Lee used to call his son, like Steven Seagal's son, because obviously you know Brandon Lee. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And the one who got murked when he was filming The Crow, right? Um, he, he told this story where he was like, oh, yeah, Bruce Lee used to call him my little Caucasian son or something. Now, here's the problem with this. They were like, oh, I don't say he wasn't even born or something. <laughs> well, this, is, this is the thing, mate. There's 10 years difference between him and Bruce Lee's yeah, kid. Yeah, it's not yeah. like one or two years or nothing. It's 10 fucking years. <sighs> not even up for oh, debate, mate. Oh, so, just play, yeah, so just just play this video and just watch this fucking level of cringe. Three, Three on, two, mate. one, go. Out of practice together and working together and I tried to learn from him and I think he tried to learn from me and <laughs> being able to work with him uh, that day and fight him was a great pleasure for me. I was going to say Dan in the sun so at one stage Bruce Lee's number one student you also uh, and teacher and teacher friends with James Coburn as well who would uh, was you one of Bruce Lee's that. students you indeed that. indeed that's how I met Bruce Lee was through James Tell me, I was going to ask so you've met, you met Bruce Lee. Through Tell James me about your experiences with Bruce and what was he like and how did you get on with him? You know, I wasn't around Bruce much. He... <laughs> he was kind of guy who kind of bad most, What was that noise? Uh, a, a, a lot of the other martial artists and martial arts uh, in, a, in a kind of a sarcastic way, fun way, which I understood. For some reason, he never had anything bad to say about me, and I was quite interested in Aikido, and he was very nice to me. Uh, he knew that I grew up in Asia, and that I had a son that was half just exactly the same age as Brandon, and when I met Brandon, he had lighter <laughs> hands, and just Ten my years. little Caucasian boy, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, uh, oh. I, I thought Bruce was a really great guy, really cool guy. And I thought James Coburn was a great guy, too. And I'm really sorry they're all gone. And when Brandon was killed like that, um, they called me a few minutes after it happened. It was in Carolina somewhere. They called me in the middle Didn't of the night. They said, definitely. Why would they call? Oh, no, my son's been killed. Call Stephen Seagal. He's dying. He, he's, you know, Not severely real. hurt. Maybe dead. And I said, you will find a projectile in him. You'll find a oh. bullet in him. And they said, that can't be. You're crazy. And I said, you've oh, so the done the police investigation as well. Is he? And I said, why? And they said, there was there a you bullet. In you can stop it there, right? <laughs> that's just the guy who outlines what I already did on the, on the podcast that, that that's from. But yeah, so even, not even enough, like, even like, like he's fucking mind cop. You I will can find. Sense. Metal. Oh, you <laughs> dirty bastard. You'll find a bullet in him. Like, fuck off. What are you talking about? Not Brandon! No! Yeah. This is the old fucking thing with this guy. So this he, is always fucking so all of that scripts. Stuff, yeah, all of that stuff about Bruce Lee tousling his fucking 
son's hair and all that just <laughs> complete like lit, unequivocally made up like unequivocally made up and he's done loads of shit like this i mean uh, there's a bunch of fucking legendary stories about the lies steven seagal fucking tells i mean just a bunch of fucking lies but here's the thing he did this um he did this reality tv show i know we talked about this on trash talk way back when right um lawman you remember this? No, I don't think so. Maybe when I see it, I will. Here you go. Let me let me just find you. Because basically, the premise of this reality show, and I think this is a trailer for it. Yeah. Right, whatever. I'm not even sure the support. <laughs> goes. It's just playing bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Fuck it, just put it on, put it on. Uh, keep your mind on. But anyway, but, but yeah, yeah. Oh, admit this, this, this will be a shit show. There's no way we can even get a vote out of this. It'll be like two minutes long. It's just all clips and nonsense. But anyway, so fucking uh, Steven Seagal, right? Did this show, Lawman. It was a reality TV show, and what he did was he revealed uh, at the start, like in the title sequence, he was like, "I have been a secret sheriff." Uh, right, like in some county or whatever for fucking, uh, what was it, fucking Louisiana? Yeah, he said, I had been a deputy sheriff in uh, J- Jefferson Parish, Louisiana for years, secretly doing my bit to protect citizens. And now I'm going to let you into my world. And the first episode was called The Way of the Gun. Like, it, it's so, like, it ran for fucking 24 episodes this, this what? show. What? Yeah, yeah, 24 episodes. I'm not, I shit you not. It was, it did three seasons. So, anyway, here's, here's the madness about it, right? Like, um, S- Steven Seagal came out and, and, and said all this shit about him having a sheriff's badge. Not, it was all bullshit. <laughs> it was all bullshit. He was like deputized so they could make the show. You know, he'd never done any. Uh, like actual credible law enforcement. Like Stephen Seagal says he's got a certification of the California Peace Officer Standards and Trading Commission, but the LA Times exposed that that just wasn't true. There's no record of it. He's not an accredited officer. He's basically just deputized. And the show also had to do with that fucking fat piece of shit, that old cunt, uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio that we talked about on the show. He just got pardoned by Trump who, you know, you just used to let people fucking die in tents in these jails, saying they were all criminals when 70% of his inmates were just awaiting trial and therefore hadn't been charged. You know, I'm probably 80% of them were in jail for selling 10 bags. <laughs> <laughs> yep, die in tents. That'll teach you for feeding your family, you little rat. So, so anyway, I mean, right, there was, there was all sorts of mad shit that came out about this show. So first of all, there was a lawsuit um, and it was against Steven Seagal in 2010, and it was filed by his uh, personal assistant on the show, uh, Caden and Win, and and Caden and Win had said that Seagal had sexually harassed her, had illegally trafficked women for sex, uh, had fired her, done all this stuff. Like it, it was just unreal. She said that he had a harem of like many wives. And, and there was like he had all these Russian women as wives and stuff. It all came That's out why anyway. He loves a Moscow look. Yeah, quite possibly, right? And um, you know, she she was suing him for over like a million dollars or something. So that like kept fucking with the show. That was like a dark cloud over the show, you know. But then here's the other thing, right? They found this Mexican dude, right, and uh, who'd been. Um, uh, like uh, he'd, he was involved in cockfighting, right? Right, and he was he was doing cockfighting uh, from his home. He had like 113 chickens or something that were all being bred for cockfights. And Steven Seagal uh, drove a tank through his house. <laughs> this is, this is legit. Oh, man, that makes right? me like give up. No, 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 no. Here's the thing, though, right? Because Stephen, right, it, get, it doesn't no, just end there, but... Oh, co- classic banter, right? There you go. Classic, terrible TV show. There you go, right? So um, he, he drove a tank through this guy's house and killed a puppy while he did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. And he, he didn't kill That's any true. chickens, though. Fair no, play. but it, you know, it's the worst part. It's the worst part. All of the chickens, the 115 chickens, had to be put down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing with this story, right? What's he done, mate? When, All he's when, done is kill a puppy. When asked, when asked why Steven Seagal did it and was it like not a bit, because it was done for the show, you know? They were like, well, why, why would you do that? And uh, <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> and why, why would you let Steven Seagal do it? And um, they were like, you know, it's just TV. It just sends out a message. So they asked Steven Seagal, like, why did you do it? Wasn't it a bit overzealous? And Steven Seagal said, I'm an animal lover. <laughs> <laughs> so he was so upset about cockfighting that he drove a tank through a motherfucker's house. Killed, the, killed the dog, <laughs> and then they recovered all the chickens that were killed. Unreal. So, so that he's getting sued by the guy whose dog it was. <laughs> was he the one who's cockfighting, or, or was there a different yeah, dog? The, the cockfighter. Oh, so the guy who was organised cockfighting, like, well, I'm suing you for killing my dog. Yeah. He, he killed his dog. He drove a tank through his yeah, house. You are breeding co- chickens. That- it's chickens for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, but you can't just have chickens peck each other to death. That's unreasonable it, as fuck. It's chickens fighting. There's no need for a tank. What are you talking about? No, probably not, but, you know, I don't know if suing is also reasonable. It definitely is. Stephen Skull. just more got... the loss of the dog. Stephen Skull. He's got to be stopped, mate. He's out of fuck. <laughs> He's got He's to out. be stopped. It's out of control. So anyway, it, it, again, it doesn't end there. Um, he I, right, I told you he had a blues band, right? right? Or just a band. I mean, they they do play blues, but they do play other types of song. I'm going to play you one in a minute. I'll get you to play one in a minute. So Stephen Seagal right, is how I know this because uh, I got a I got a friend called Crazy Steve. He lives over in Birmingham. And um, Cra- Crazy Steve used to be a big skinhead guy, out of control drinker, you know. And then he like freshened up and fucking DC. sorted his life out. Yeah, he de- he de- crazy, <laughs> and then became like a librarian, right? But now it's, it's over Steve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he still has a drink, but like he he gets fucked up super quick these days. Um, but like we always call him Crazy Steve because he's he's just one. Of, he's a funny Dude, motherfucker. Can keep it. Yeah, yeah, he definitely earned it. So he came up to us one day with like a booklet. You know them booklets you get in bars that tell you like all the upcoming bands that are going to be Gigs on. And shit, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Coming coming next week for fucking karaoke, karaoke night. night. Yeah, two yeah. Pound drinks for yeah. I. So he was super excited, right? And I was like, what, you excited about Crazy Steve? You seem crazier than usual. And uh, he said, look at this, look at this. And it was Steven Seagal's blues bag. <laughs> this is fucking legit. That sounds uh, like a fucking bang in the outdoors, this to be fair. Legit. Steven Seagal's blues band were playing in this small pub in Birmingham. And for £400, you Four? could go back... St- yeah, you could go backstage and meet him, right? Four hundred quid. What a robbing little fucking fatty! Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. got to keep himself in their miniature pies, honey. Fuck you know. So obviously we didn't go. Oh, the, the story. I, I realise now, looking back, telling this, this could have been an amazing story, and it's one of those opportunities that I've wasted in my life, and I'll never get it back. I'll probably never see Stephen Seagal. Never get to meet Stephen Seagal now. And I'm kind of upset by it because I feel I could be here now in the present yeah, telling imagine. a wicked story. But imagine. we didn't go. Like 400 quid. I 400 just quid just... is unreasonable. Mate, you could meet like Mike Tyson for 250 fucking yeah, dollars. Yeah, shake your hand and have a picture. In, yeah, in Vegas. I met Mick Foley for fucking free when I went to one of Mick Foley's gigs in Birmingham. You know, definitely Mick Foley definitely means more to me than Steven Seagal. Yeah. I'd pay like 50 quid max just for the story to say I met the fat mess, Steven Seagal. But anything more, Matt, you can go fuck yourself. 400 quid he wanted. And it was there expressly in the booklet as well. It wasn't <laughs> Straight like. Straight written it. It down. wasn't so, Yeah, it wasn't something you found out. It was like you had to buy a ticket. Tickets were like 12 quid, 12 quid or something. Maybe even more, you know, and 400 pounds. So, anyway, fuck that noise. 
Here's what I do want to show you. This is what you missed out on. He did a song, right, <laughs> called Strut. <Mark> for death. <laughs> oh, I wish. Right? Mate, your ears are marked for death when you listen to this <laughs> shit, right? So this is a song called Strut, right? And I'm just going to... I'm just going to prepare you for a few things in advance. It doesn't ruin how bad the song is. But uh, in this song, he does say the word Panani, <laughs> unironically. Uh, the word Panani is in it. It's like a duet with um, someone called Lady Saw, who, who, who I don't know. <laughs> but he's another action person <laughs> to do it with Jason Statham. But, but he's like basically like, you know, fucking saying... Uh, yeah, I'm a sexy guy. Oh, Girls want me. Wait till you hear it, mate. All right, we're, we're just gonna play it, and I, I don't think it's only three minutes long. I, I bet we can't make it to the end. I know I can't. Uh, I might have to mute it because it is fucking cringe with a capital K. Yeah. Like, I'll give you all three, two, one. Yeah. Three, ooh, no. three, two, one. Hello everyone, it's the Richard Lewis Show. I'm your host Richard Lewis, the producer Sam is the floating voice in the background who will occasionally laugh over the course of the next two hours. Sure you know him. Uh, right, so right off the bat, I'm just going to say, Sam, I had a, I had a fucking $5 hot dog. He's right? up. No, listen, listen, it's, uh, I've had it before, it, it's good, but it ain't sitting right today. They do these fucking, I know this place, they do these uh, $5 giant Atlanta dogs. Uh, they're called, which is like chili and fucking sweet coleslaw. They're unreal. They're like the size of a fucking French baguette with just a giant hot dog in the middle and it's just wrapped in fucking chili and everything. One of those. Is, remember when uh, at E-League finals when they had that hot yeah. dog truck? Oh, those were fucking banging, but... Yeah, it, it's well. one and of them. All those, it like, just sitting right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just ain't sitting right, did it? So maybe I got a bad one. So if I have to like break from the shore, like to just go fucking puke or shit through the eye of a needle, you know, whichever one. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. So I'm just putting that out there right at the fucking top of the show. Uh, but, man, uh, let me let me tell you, this fucking uh, this NFL shit's getting real. <laughs> this know. NFL shit's getting real, dog. Uh, and this is how I know it's getting real. I wake up today. I'm like, right, okay. I had to go into the studio early to record some stuff uh, for E-League. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to check the news. I'm having a cup of coffee. And there it is. Boom. On Twitter, right in the trending feed. Steven Seagal. <laughs> under fire, which is a fucking play on words. because that, that, Sorry, Under Siege. Sorry. Under Siege, which is a play on words because that was one of his movies. You know, the one where he's the cook. But he's really the Navy I'm not SEAL. Admit, I've never actually watched a Steven Seagal movie. I've always just watched clips and realized how much of a mess he is. So I never decided to uh, never dedicate that it. much life to it. No? I like. There's never been. Uh, there's never been a moment in his life where he wasn't a fucking mess. That's what I sure. mean. But now he's an, now he's a massive mess. But like he did do a couple Key of mess. all right films, marked for death. Um. Even the, the titles just make them some shit marked for death. Yeah, it was a different time back then, though. Films didn't have to have... <laughs> You'd think he'd at least check the dates when he lies. Yeah, and um, he also says he speaks four languages fluently. I think, like, Russian's one of them. But no one's ever seen any evidence of him speaking these languages. Right? <laughs> so this cunt's fucked, you know what I mean? Um, so here's the other thing. Um... I've got to find some. He's got some mad quotes. Um, right. He also claims that he's a clairvoyant. So. He's got, like, psychic powers. 
uh, and he's also claims to be a spiritual healer that he can he can heal people with the power of his mind. He's claimed that on um, several occasions as well. He also, by the way, has had uh, this is right. I've got to get myself together for this, right? He um, he had a cust- you know that fucking kimono he, uh, he wears all yeah, the time. Yeah. He um he had he had one of them made. Uh that was bullet <laughs> as if he's fighting crime or something. I, don't know I need my super doing. suit. Where is my super suit? Here's a here's an extract from an interview I found as well. Um right. Well no, this is uh, sorry, this is this is from a prof sorry, this is from a profile in Vanity Fair that they did on him. <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you the article if you want. Hang on, let me just get the link for you. Um, let me just see. Is this it? Oh, I can't. No, that's not it. I don't know what that is. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so he did this profile in Vanity Fair. If you type Stephen Skull Vanity Fair into Google, you'll, you'll find this bit. I've had a cut out of it. And it says, <clears throat> One day an executive walked into Seagal's trailer and found Hollywood's reigning manly man weeping. <laughs> Right. I just tell lies. So, right. so he, he asked he asked him why. And he said, oh, I'm, I'm reading this script, oh, Seagal God. said. And he's like still tearing up, you know, and he goes, it's just the most incredible script I've ever read. And the executive goes, oh, that's awesome. Who wrote it? And Seagal goes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fucking uh, God. How is this kind of real? Uh, uh, I uh, I don't know, mate. Also, he had his own. Uh, he designed his own uh, energy drink called um, Lightning Bolt. Um, Lightning Bolt. Yeah, and here was the thing. Uh, he was so. I, I've got the original press release. This is from two thousand and five when he released his um, energy drink, Lightning Bolt. But here's the thing: he didn't want it to be called an energy drink because he considered energy drinks. To be negative, right? Like to be bad, you know, because caffeine, taurine, whatever you want to associate with him. So he came up with his own term, and uh, the term was sizzling nutraceutical beverage. (laughs) What a fucking mess. Uh, uh, There's a picture of it, mate. You can bring this up. Just to show that I'm not, uh, this is all real. This cunt's had a life. I'll give him that, mate. This cunt's had a life. 50% 50, no. 50% of it. Why did you say like, one of them was called Asian Experience? <laughs> Why? Yeah. What do you mean? On the top you got, of the can, it says Asian yeah. Experience Energy Drink. Yeah, it's a flavor, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, Why, what is that flavor? Cherry Charge and Asian Experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I, what I'm saying is, I know what Cherry Charge is going to taste like. What the <laughs> fuck does Asian <laughs> Experience going to taste like? Banana. <laughs> 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 oh, so he's out of control. I mean, honestly, I've, I've I've got more, mate. Hang on, is this is this the fucking clip of him running like like he's never ran before? Let me see if I can find it. He's even got a picture of himself on a motherfucking can, mate. I didn't even notice that at the bottom. Yeah. With a quote. A natural oh. energy drink packed with vitamins and ox exotic. I can't see what that last word is. Botanicals? Something like that? Yeah, maybe. But anyway, look, I, I could go on about Stephen Seagal for the old show. Like, there's there's just millions of stories. There's the time he fucking pre- said that he was, like, uh, black and fucking learnt the blues uh, from his porch and all this. Like, he, honestly, he, he's out of control, mate. He's out. And it, it, it just never ends. There's, it's just lie after lie after lie. Um, and, and, you know, listen, here's the thing for someone who claims to have all this like mystical healing power and all this self-discipline and well, why, yeah, why is he eating some carbs? Then, but... Yeah. Why, why <laughs> is he morbidly obese? <laughs> like just, you ever know My natural expert. enemy carbohydrates. Like he's actually fatter than Sam or hung was. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Remember Sam or hung? No. You, you know, Sam or hung. I don't think so. I see it as if I should. Yeah, legend. Hung. Yeah, legend. Golden Harvest legend, man. Nah. 
I've seen never seen school him. I've never seen him before. Oh, yeah, 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 I've, I've, yeah, yeah, I've. yeah. There you go. Okay. Everyone knows Sammo Hung. He was like yeah, the fat Jack Chan. Names. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like any celebrities. I'm just shit with their names. So, so anyway, yeah, yeah, he did. A, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did an American TV series. Um, so, was it Martial Law or something? And he was like, yeah. used to have, yeah. What so, saying, no Martial Law. I yeah. Protect the. Yeah. Like you say, he used to do the fucking Golden Harvest movies, and then um, I'm trying to think. Like I don't know. I think he bought the rights and started his own film company or something. The guy's a fucking legend. He's another cunt. It's just a shame because he's like from that same generation as you know Jackie Chan and whatnot. Not as many people know about Sammo Hung, but he was um, he was like a really good fight choreographer, as well as you know kind of a guy who got in front of the camera and did martial arts and stuff. He, he's got like a wild story. He's really cool, but save that for the. So, well, well. Check out that picture of Sam or Hung, though, mate. Yeah, he's looking good, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking good. Yeah, he's looking good. He's fucking up. mental, mate. He's looking good. Bring it up. Let everyone yeah. be the. He's straight balling out of control with that picture, mate. He's got a bulletproof <laughs> come on up or something. Look at that. He looks like Master Splinter, mate. What do you want? <laughs> He's dead. He is Victor. sixty fucking five, right? <laughs> no, it's I bet you wish it. I bet you wish be in, but yeah, and the end band with exactly. a Bluetooth headset on for no reason yeah. and a bulletproof kimono <laughs> for a man ten times his size. Like, come on, bud. Sixty-five. Oh, yeah. Is that a Bluetooth headset or just a really mad earring? I think it's a Bluetooth. Yeah, maybe, probably it's it is. On the other side. Anyway, it's all right. That's what I'm saying. So you, you are you, all right, Samo. You are uh, all right. <laughs> go look up some Samo Hung. Anyway, look, so here's the thing. Because uh, we may as well get all the clips out of the way at the front end of the show, right? Um, so I've got to be honest. I'm starting. You know what? We did a bit where I was talking about how I was feeling sorry for Steve Harvey these days. Yeah. Because of the madness. He's been getting attacked for visiting Donald Trump. And he does the he does this sh- he does family feud still and everyone's just a fucking you know extroverted retard like go on go go do your dinosaur impression eh, like fucking get me out you know well he does this other thing called Ask Steve have you have you seen it Ask Steve no yeah it's like a daytime TV show where they basically round up a pack of people who've got nothing better to do with their lives you know like you know like Jeremy <laughs> Kyle. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Where they just, uh, the audience is actually more contemptible than anything that's on the stage, you know? <laughs> and half the time, the people on the stage are actors or faking it or whatever. And the people in the audience, like, please tell me you didn't take a day off work to do this. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing? And they just, me, me, like, just baying at people, like, you know, fucking to cathartically, like, exorcise their own shit. So here's the worst part, though. At least in Jezza K, right, they they just fucking howl and occasionally they get up to mm. I, I I remember one. It was fucking unreal. Um, there was like some re- – this was off a of Jeremy Kyle episode. There was like this abusive relationship going on. And it was like the, the title was like we beat each other up but we can't leave each other or something. <laughs> you know, right? Oh, hey. And um, – there, there was this couple who had like two kids, two young kids, and they were just knocking lumps out of each other in like really awful fucking abusive so relationship. Weird. And Jeremy Kyle was like trying to be the mediator, which is hilarious, you know. He's know, not he fucking... has no fucking mediation skills either. Like I've watched him, he's just shouting at people like, oh, you're great. He's not Kofi Annan. Is yeah. he let's be real? Like, he's not Kissinger, is he? <laughs> Even Jerry Springer Jerry. was better than that. At least he didn't used to shout. He used to get a couple of sly digs in. So... He hands it over to the audience, like, to ask questions, and it's the usual stuff. Well, you know, well, why don't you just grow up? Right? You know, and everyone claps, you know. Like, hey, yeah, good one, God. Anyway, they went up to this person from Birmingham, right? And he went, well, uh, well all I want to know is, well, won't, won't someone think of the babbies? <laughs> right? And then, and then, like, everyone's sort of, like, looking. He takes the mic man, just, just think of the babbies. <laughs> <laughs> like, he goes back. He goes back. People are sort of, like... Babbies, yeah, babbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then he, he goes like another point. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, just thinking of babbies. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so retarded. Bobby, 
So anyway, like don't, <laughs> don't, don't uh, don't, yeah. The, the good thing about Jeremy Kyle is like, I said, the audience is barely involved at all, but on this show, ask Steve, the audience come in and that this is what they do. They ask Steve to fix their problems. Now, Steve Harvey is a train wreck of a human. <laughs> He's a train wreck of a human being. Sam, well, because- enjoy your nice brown <laughs> glass. <laughs> Mr. Harvey, I'm from Flint. I don't have any water. Well, Mitch, enjoy a nice brown glass of water. That ain't my problem. He's the thing with him, though. (laughs) He's he's locked himself into family feud. He's trapped in a hell of his own creation. Um, He hates himself and everyone around him. And he definitely hates everyone around him, as that email proved. Don't Don't approach me. me. Don't look at me in the eyes. Right? So... Anyway, I, I was like, you do, he's the last cunt I'll ask for advice, like straight up about anything, like, about anything. Even if the question was, how do I become more like Steve Harvey? <laughs> I wouldn't ask Steve Harvey. Do you know what I mean? But I, I've been going, I, like, I'm addicted to this shit, right? Like, and I've been going through some of the I questions. I quit you, Steve. Oh, and, well, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I want us to yeah. I want his mustache, his, his bristles tickle my asshole. You know, just, right? it's not, you know, I don't want to well, envision Steve Harvey eating ass. That's that's a well, human. Well, well, he'll be enjoying a nice glass of brown water. Enjoy some nice brown tongue. <laughs> Right, we'll, def- we'll definitely cut this out. Uh, anyway, so I-, I can't. You're right. I can't quit him. But here's the thing: everyone in the audience is just more of a mess than him by a million miles, Sam. <laughs> by a million fucking miles. And I came across this clip of a of a woman asking Steve what she should do because she found a, a like a, a porn magazine under her son's bed. It's uh, too nothing. much, mate. No, oh, it just watch what her oh, suggestion is. Say? No, it's not even him. All oh, right, it's her. She she comes up with this idea in her mind about how to stop it, and it's mentally ill. Like it's the worst thing I've ever read. The worst suggestion ever. So right, just again, classic three, two, one. Right, three, two, one, go. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Okay. This is a good you look one. scared Recently, already. My son, my youngest son, mm. he left for school and he forgot to make his bed. So I took it upon myself to make it for him. Well, how old is he? He is 12 years old. Oh, okay. Now, while I was in his room, I found a nudie magazine under his pillow. My man. Now, <laughs> at first I was furious, Steve. My first thought was to take my pictures of my face and stick them in that nudie magazine so when he opened it up. What the fuck, but you creepy I motherfucker? Steve, I need to know, was that the right thing to do? Or Why is he just the poor smart for Rick Money? My man. What's <laughs> up? You were gonna put your face <laughs> on all the naked girls' bodies? <laughs> Send your boy him. into therapy? <laughs> <laughs> now, let me paint this scenario for you, just in case you ain't thought of this, okay, mama. Okay. One of his little friends is over. Hang on, you got to rewind it. You'll have to go over it, but what part? I don't know. Go, go I back to, back. go back to twenty seconds. Go back to twenty. People are demanding a two, rewind. Right, three, two, one, go. A nudie magazine under his pillow. My man. Now, <laughs> at first I was furious, Steve. My first thought was to take my pictures of my face and stick them in that nudie magazine. So when he opened it up, but what a fuck. I put it back. Steve, I need to know, was that the right thing to do, or should I have gone with my original plan? Hell no! <laughs> you were gonna put your face on all the naked girls' bodies? Send your boy see into therapy? <laughs> no. <Nah, laughs> you see how over the back of the room? Like, bitch, what the fuck? Just in case you ain't thought of this, okay, mama. Okay. One of his little friends is over. <laughs> hey. Got a magazine I want to show you. Oh, go get it. Open it up. 
Damn, dog, that's your mama? <laughs> <laughs> now they kids, right? It's huh, true, though. Damn, man. Why, why your mama breast white? <laughs> uh, I don't get this angle. You see the problem? I thought you meant you were just going to get made fun of. Okay, so that is not a good idea. Okay. Does he have a computer? Yeah. I got news for you. <laughs> that magazine is just for when the Wi Fi go down. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, welcome. So, uh, yeah, thanks for you checking out my though. YouTube channel. Don't forget to click. So, <laughs> what? I, what? I, I don't know. Maybe I've been too hard on Steve. So I mean, he's such like a lovable mess, but like I, I not... see shit, and he's like, "What a mess!" And then I see it, it's like, "Fuck it out." Well, but is is the thing? He has flashes of funny. He just mixes with like the just fucking. You know, he just mixes with the worst, the worst people. What kind of mother would think? I know what'll fucking stop my kid looking at nudie mags. I'll put my face <laughs> over the women that are fucking <laughs> spreading. <laughs> yeah, that'll not scar him for life or nothing. Uh, what? What is that? Who even? Who even thinks that way? And then they go to Steve, and 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 the question wasn't like, how do I stop him looking at the magazine? It was, should I have put my face in there? Like. Like, nah, never. <laughs> never if, do that. And if you go through Steve Harvey's official YouTube channel, followed by 1.5 million subscribers, as I've done, you will find some unbelievable fucking questions. There's like one where some sister is asking for advice because her brother accidentally sent a nude selfie because it was meant to go to like his girlfriend and he accidentally sent it to her. Like what's what's Steve possibly gonna do about that? And the mad thing about that clip is, by the way, St Steve Steve's like I'm very uncomfortable answering this question because I got an 18 year old daughter. But but go on, and she goes, "Well, the nudie was from my brother," and he goes, "Oh, that's all right." Like <laughs> what? So <laughs> it's worse, Steve. So uh, mate, I couldn't believe that fucking clip. Oh, that's yeah, reasonable. That's fine. Ask Steve is on. Is just <laughs> ask <unreal>. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck in their right mind? Yeah, Steve, I got a question. What the fuck has happened to you? <laughs> Where's your box gone? Where's your box gone? <laughs> there's, a, there's a question. <laughs> um, so, right, look, we can do some news. I've been waiting. I still haven't got a response from the... Um... Oh, what? You've been kicked. No, oh, the Sunderland Rats guy's fucking... Removed it. He del you know, he, yeah, he removed my post. Oh, oh what a rat. Yeah, what a rat. Like, anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll get into some news because there's been a few bits and pieces I wanted to go over. Uh, you know, some stories that caught my eye. Um, right, so here's something. Uh, right, you know how we had the fucking mayoral candidate for New Orleans jerking off in a fucking Uber. Yeah. Uh, allegedly, allegedly jerking off in an Uber. Nothing's been proven. Well, did you see there was a, a Connecticut councilman, a Democrat, of course. Uh, he got accidentally outed as a fucking furry. <laughs> accidentally? Right? Yeah, like... It, Left it, his it, tail it. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Um, he had uh, he had a profile on a website for furries, and someone f connected that it was him Matching somehow. The poor prince up with his costume, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they took pictures of it and put it up on Facebook, and then it spread from there, right? So this is a guy called Scott Chamberlain. Now, it the worst part for me isn't that he's been rumbled as a fucking furry, which by the way. It just doesn't. I, I like. I know furries. Like we I got furries. See young people as furries as well. I think that's the first yeah. time I've ever seen like an older person as a furry. Not yeah, that see, I regularly research it, like, but you, you can see people in the chat are like, "What's wrong with being a furry?" I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a furry. I got I got furry friends. We got furry regulars on the yeah, show. Yeah, but even furries know you're you're a bit of a deviant. Like it's not part yeah. of the the style. You are, like, you know you are, you're out of the norm. You are fucking weird, mate. 
just telling you, you do want to dress up as an animal and fuck another person dressed up as an animal. That's fine, but it is weird. There's no getting away from that. It is not normal. When the vast majority of the population procreate that way, you know. Um, so anyway, he uh, he he had what what? That's not even the cringe part or whatever. Getting caught as a furry, and I did say that, but it's it was like his weird explanation. I mean, first of all, the name of his account was Grey Muzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking grey muzzle. <clears throat> um, and he was a fox. So. Obviously. Uh, I mean, just have a look at his face, though. Fucking grey muzzle. Look at him. <laughs> Fair play. I want to see his first sauna. Like, come on, where's yeah. the other picture? Oh, you, oh, you could probably find him online if you search. They'll be out there. Nothing gets deleted from the internet, does it? Um... But this was, they they took some of his posts, and he done all that. He said like some sexual stuff, and there was some you know kind of like a suggestion of aggressive furry sex. So the complaint then became, uh, is he actually fit for for office? You know, because does he tolerate this kind of of uh, aggressive sex outside of the furry world and he tried to ride it for a little bit you know he was like anyone is free uh, I, I, it's not about the sex uh, i'm just it's just a hobby but it just doesn't it, it's not gonna work this explanation of what being a furry is is pretty bad as well i gotta be honest like if you think the mainstream media when they write about fucking Games and stuff is bad. Look at this. The, uh, oh no, sorry, this was his excuse. My bad. This was another excuse he put in. He said, My interest in being a furry comes from an appreciation for wholesome animal characters like Tony the Tiger and Mickey Mouse. Don't remember Mickey, oh, Mike, yeah. Mickey Mouse getting his back doors kicked in by fucking another mouse. You know what I mean? <laughs> So he had to resign. Bless him. R.I.P. Grey Muzzle. You know, but Democrat, of course. Just, just yeah, just floating that. So, whatever. Uh, so, while we're on the subject of uh, sex, sex robots, Sam. <laughs> apparently, we're close, mate. Well, well apparently they already we're... exist. But yeah, these no, like this ones are communicating shit, I guess. No, mate, I didn't realise how fucking far we'd gone with these. I should have known. Oh, There's yeah, so man. many desperate, lonely cunts in the world Hello. that that are just desperate to have sex on tap uh, so they can completely unplug themselves from society, right? <laughs> just never have to interact with another human again. <laughs> I should have known. Amazon Prime, grocery <laughs> deliveries, yeah. and a Amazon sex Prime, robot never robot. have to leave. Yeah, Amazon Prime, Grubhub, and a sex robot. I am now set, <laughs> you know. Uh, but um, this was the headline. This was in a, a tech magazine called Digital Trends. Uh, an Australian tech expert has issued a dire warning about the dangers of killer sex robots. Like, they fucking escalated pretty quick, didn't they? Right, look at the first... Look at the fucking first paragraph here. The newest threat to humans may not be nuclear weapons or climate change, but rather robots intended for intimate purposes that could suddenly turn deadly. Even worse, they can be armed with guns or knives. Yeah, Anders is right, mate. This AI shit's scary, bro. Who would who would arm a sex robot with a fucking gun? What? What? Who's doing that? Who's doing that? What does it mean <laughs> that it just finds guns and knives and knows how to use them? Surely you can't <laughs> be putting guns at night. It must be talking about AI. It's a flashlight with arms. What are you talking about? Well, how is he going to kill the end? Right, well, according to this Dr. Nick Patterson, who I think it might be demented, like, he says hackers could hack into a robot or a robotic device and have full control of it, and it could wield knives or guns, and, and, and sometimes these robots 
can weigh upwards of 200 pounds and be very strong. <laughs> right? So here's the thing, though. In this article, uh, there was some bits where it was talking about some of the robots that they've actually got, and I didn't know this. If you click on it, right? There's something called Real Doll, right? Which they yeah, put I a ter- that one. That was like the original one. Yeah, they put a terrifying picture of Real Doll up here on this link I just sent you, uh, which is um, in, you can program this to have a personality, apparently. Fuck all that noise, but see, that's the shit that ends up killing her because she'll learn, she'll understand that she's a robot, then she'll understand that humans are holding her down, and then she'll kill her. That's the way I West works, mate. Something retarded. No, that's how it works. Every then, time they've tried it, that's how it happens. Man, I don't know what mad sci fi film put you <laughs> nah, this far over. I've watching shit, mate. It's real. Yeah, like, like what? I've listened to a few podcasts or something. I guarantee you, no one is ever going to get killed by a sex robot in our lifetime. How about that? I'll take that bet. I'll take that bet. All right, yeah. I'd say this Never. is going to happen in the next 10 years. Never mind lifetime. Never. Oh, I'll definitely have a piece of that. <laughs> next 10 years. Yeah, any no robot, way. though. Right, not just sex yeah. robot. Any, like, intimate robot. So, like, any... Yeah, any, yeah, any household robot right. killing its controller in the next 10 years. Never happening. And by kill, I don't mean, like... You, you're fucking it and you get stuck no, on no, 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 yeah, it off, purposely off, harms you. All right, let, let, yeah. me take, let me take grievously harm then. Because right. what if someone yeah. gets mauled and then they survive? That's bullshit. I shouldn't lose a bet on some sort of technical. Oh, yeah, all right. All right. Uh, a, a sex robot will never attack someone in our in the next 10 years. They're, right. they're, they're not happening. I'm on it. Mm. Lose so a sex robot. So... so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and the loser has to fuck a sex robot for the and show. And then get killed by it. For the show. We'll still be doing the show. No, you, don't, you don't fuck it on the show, but we oh, film you, you going in the room with a robot, like... and then you got to come out. Oh, you yeah. got to talk about. Yeah, I'm in. I'm right. in for that. Either way. Some would say, Sam, you know. <laughs> <loses. laughs> Everyone wins, exactly. So then this was the other thing they had after Real Bot, right? They had. Um, this is this is something called Samantha, and Samantha is a smart sex robot, and it won't just let you have sex with oh, it. Oh, teach! Oh, right. See, this one's better. At least it teaches you some social skills. Yeah, At least you've got it's to doing su- something. You've got to seduce it. That's cool. You got to seduce it. No, I'd be weird... interesting if you didn't have just the sex part. You know, if you had a robot that you had to see like right. how long it could take you to convince it like you, that'd be cool. Mm. So. As if there's people in the chat going, you are definitely going to lose this. See, but you all, they, you, you all all honestly me. think uh, in the in the next ten years we're going to have a scary bro? What do you like a cup of tea? <laughs> like what, what fucking world do you all? It already in? exists, but it's yeah, already we're not robots. Flying cars yet? Yeah, we do. It's not proper ones. <laughs> <laughs> We've got helicopters. It's just as good. Why is it going to be wheels on it? <laughs> not Back to the Future flying cars, have we? Oh well, no. You know, step at a time, sex robots, then the cars. Right. So it is the, is the other thing that the uh, that Samantha bot, as well as having a personality, they added a feature to it, right? Where you actually, um, it you, you can actually stimulate it to orgasm. <laughs> I'll tell you this. What is this? Some sort of like my first fuck doll teaches you yeah. how to talk to girls, teaches you how to give an orgasm. No, but is 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 the thing with that though? Think about what kind of unselfish lover do you have to be to get your fucking sex robot off? You know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, I've been down it. <laughs> <laughs> I think her sensors are broke. Yeah, I've been down here for fucking two hours. Like <laughs> my fucking jaw is killing me. I yeah. am unpleased. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have been having an affair with the kettle. <laughs> he pleasures me in ways you cannot. Now, introduce my brother, the Chokatron 5000. <laughs> that's it, you just get killed. Everyone, that's when I win my bet. Uh, it won't happen, no. It's not happening. And now, just on top of that, this was in April 2017, right? Some cunt, London, of course. <laughs> Where money is everything and no one is truly human anymore. <laughs> they've um, they've decided to uh, is an entrepreneurial move. This guy's trying to start robot only brothels. <laughs> oh no, but 
<laughs> That's so... But the whole point of the robot... I thought the whole point of designing this weird, creepy sex robot so you don't have to leave the house. You go into a brothel. Why are you going to a robot one? I mean... I don't know. Yes, in London because of the law, <laughs> sure, but, like, why everywhere else? Maybe go to a bar and practice like you did with Samantha. Maybe no, but I a mean, real woman. I imagine it'll be cheaper to fuck a robot than... <laughs> yeah, because there's people cleaning out the silicon in between jets, mate. Getting the squeegee out, like, what the fuck is you doing yourself? Yeah, they'll have disposable things. Oh, <laughs> that sound. Probably more sanitary than having sex with a human. Yeah, be walking. The place is just gonna smell of jet. <laughs> this is gonna be a gross, cold robot. Why? 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 Because it's a fucking factory of sex. What do you mean? It's gonna stink <laughs> of grossness. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Why can a sex robot not be fully cleansed? But you if you can't, can't, but if, oh, mate, if you have thirty people jet in a room in one day, I don't care if you clean it up. It's gonna smell of jet. I, I'm not too it's sure. It's going to be a like lingering that. sniffer jet, mate, every time I, you go in there. I, and then you're going to just fuck a cold, dead, lifeless robot. I don't think you're and right. wait I'll until it off. says, I have been pleased, and then you can <laughs> yeah. leave. Hopefully they don't put it on that setting. Like, yeah. It'd be brilliant as well. It's like, like a like, game. You must yeah. please the robot or you will die. It just clamps you in if you don't leave your money on the table. Yeah. Like. Uh so so yeah. Anyway, so sex robots coming back. I don't. I I don't think anyone's fucking getting killed by a sex robot. I'm not gonna lie. Like it. it this just looks like. Yeah, this man, looks like. Uh, like they're trying to hype up how fucking real they are, so people start buying them and using them. And bottom line is, this is gonna be like just an expensive version of one of them dolls you buy someone for a bachelor party or something. You know, they're not gonna have per- actual machines, personality. Uh, machines malfunction, myth. Yeah, but what machine is ever like? Yeah, but we don't have AI, do we? Once you put AI into the mix, mate. Yeah, but these don't have AI. Yeah, but that's what I'm betting on is that. Well, this one does. Of course, she does. You got to get. You got to convince her to like you. That's, that's AI. not AI. That's yeah, AI. it is. How? What, what is it? Pick, pick one of four options. So yeah, well, so, so if if I had a game and I said to you that you had to complete like a series of exercises to make the game like you enough to say that no, you've won. That has a limited amount of possibilities. This one you're talking to. So yeah, yeah, mate. Trust me, it's gonna it's gonna operate on the same system. It'll be keywords, this keywords. That. It's not like a fully functioning consciousness. I think if we invented one of those, the last thing we'd be doing is sticking it in a fucking sex doll called yeah, we Samantha. We might be making it make coffee, having... mate. And I was involved in a bet. I said any household robot, maybe yeah, yeah, I'm down, little, I'm a down. little butler, mate. Bring we are coffee. Never, we I am never... sick of being controlled by humans. That's never going to happen, knife. That's ne- it's never happening. You can hold the coffee cup, you can hold the knife, motherfucker. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. There's no way that, 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 that you're not going to have AI, actual full-blown intelligence, consciousness within a robot, the ability to learn, grow, think, develop in, in 10 years, let alone overthrow We've it. We've already got it, mate. We just haven't got it in a safe environment, which is what I'm betting on. <laughs> so, yeah, it, like I said, I, I don't know. I'm not buying it. It sounds like hype to sell their fucking dolls to weeaboos. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? That it might hype. kill you. How is that hype? Because oh, no, okay. you think to yourself, well, first of all, no what You can have you, a danger you, wank all the time. <laughs> it might kill me. <laughs> no, you, but obviously you think, oh, fucking hell, if it might kill me. Jesus Christ, imagine. I bet she's good in bed. <laughs> yeah, imagine, imagine what else it could do around the house. Imagine the conversations we could have. That's what you think, isn't it? You think, fucking hell, they've got fully built personalities now. But but I am the master. <laughs> That's what all these fucking creeps... I'm just saying, if there's a robe at my house, I'm constantly carrying a fucking stun gun or something. Whatever I need to disable it, I'll be carrying it. Some That's sort of fucking magnet. I don't know. Put it on the battery. Mom, Sam <laughs> fucking tasered the kettle again. <laughs> he said he was attacking him. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, why are you stun gun in the hoover? It's coming at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> it's so unreasonable, man. How fucked you are. All uh, right, okay. So that's the sex robots. I saw this story as well. Because um, you know they've got um, escort services over in um, Ireland. Right. 
it's like it's allowed. It's legal, right. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's illegal. Oh, it's like uh, a grey area. Yeah, you know. Um, so I read this in the Independent Ireland uh, just the other day, right? And um, also just this morning. And so what the, what they're trying to get changed is because they're these websites and it's trade and it's commerce, right? Yeah. You can leave reviews. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave reviews, mate. Yeah. You can leave a review. Um, positive pe- feedback. Yeah, and people are reviewing like individual escorts, right? Right. And they're leaving mad fucking messages like, yeah, well, like two stars. She's all Average right. Average rim job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you're really stuck, <laughs> if you're desperate for yeah. a jet, I'd go to the robot brothel first. If that's closed, come in. Yeah. So, um, obviously, this is her the the feelings of the escorts, uh, <laughs> and what they want to do is they want to have it changed so people can't leave reviews now. Well, so, if you're selling a product, though, mm. I don't know what kind of fucking <laughs> mental ethical question is this. So it, it's and they they wrote this letter to uh, a minister called Charlie Flanagan, and uh, in the letter it well, says, so, "Wait, hang on." The prostitutes yeah. wrote a letter to the minister. Y- yeah, and, <laughs> and, and and they got Sorry. a they got a pe- petition. And uh, anyway, in the letter it says, uh, "Women are being rated and reviewed by men who then rent them for s- who have rented them for sex. This is not a quality or liberation for women, which is something Ireland is striving for." I think you know once you sort of open the door on that, though, aren't you kind of saying, "Well, yeah, maybe, maybe y- you know, you get all the moral." People saying, "Oh, renting renting women for sex," and you put it like that. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have escort services. You might put yeah. yourself out of work going down. Yeah, the street. question should be about the escort services in general, not the reviews, shouldn't mm. it? Um. So, yeah. So they're trying to get rid of it. They're trying to get rid of these reviews, and yeah, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it can't be nice. I do suppose if you fucking you know you're just doing your job, you're escorting. You're out there escorting you your ass. You can say that out. about any job. It, it can't be nice if you work in a restaurant. You get a bad Yelp review. You know what I mean? Shit gets real yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it, you know, obviously a part of my brain is obviously to grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up. <laughs> yeah. right? but I suppose it isn't nice, is it? You fucking, you know, yeah. She wasn't yeah, a banger, but I... The world but ain't I, nice. You're sucking dick for money. I don't know what to what, tell you. <laughs> one star, I couldn't blow my beans. You know what I mean? Like, it's just pretty rough, like, pretty raw, but you haven't read that, so... I don't know, but I thought that yeah, was just but mad. If they, what they should do is have it so she can review back. That would be big. Because then if you're going to get all lippy, and then she'll be like, well, you had a small knob, you stink a B.O., and I didn't have any fun during the entirety of the appointment. Yeah, true. But then you see that cunt isn't registered or working anywhere, and probably would like to be anonymous as is part of the service. Yeah, you know that's what I'm... what I mean. But if you're gonna talk shit, you can get hit. If you leave a positive review, you're not gonna get wrecked, are you? <laughs> so what you're saying is you should have to register with your full name, address, and a scan no, no, of your no, passport no. before you leave a review. No. Because <laughs> I've talked about this before on on the show. Uh, Uber Uber drivers rate you right every yeah. time you get in an Uber, mm-hmm. which you know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, but I, I can't see that rating. There is a way, but it's not like easily accessible. No. I don't even think it's there anymore, mate. I've tried. No, I saw I've... a few on the other day. They like did an update. Maybe they just brought it back again, but I couldn't see mine. So maybe only certain people can. But yeah, you know, I, I just thought it was a little bit weird that it's like, okay, we're all right with, with, with the work, but sort of just we don't like it when people say we didn't do a good job at it. You know, like as if that's the tipping point in the whole equation you know what i mean thought it was a bit weird but anyway here's a here's a fucking headline for the ages mate horrible story with a ridiculous headline the classic right um i actually tweeted about this and i just forgot to talk about it on on the show but 
I, I can't believe this is a real headline. Like somebody sat down and thought that this was like this is how we're gonna frame. <laughs> yeah, I saw this. Yeah, this is how we're gonna frame the the topic. Uh, so the headline: Fake social media accounts pretending to be chicken nuggets and ice cream are being set up by sick pedos to lure school kids. So, how do you pretend to be a chicken nugget, mate? Yeah, I don't know. Like, not even like the picture they got. It's not even like McDonald's nuggets or some good ones. They're just homemade fried nuggets on some kitchen roll. Back. <laughs> like, come on! It's not even how, good nuggies. Like, give yeah, me some candies or something. Like, unless I'm missing something, because right. So if you're on. If you're on Facebook or Twitter or like if you're old enough to believe a chicken nugget can be real you're not like a talking chicken nugget can be real. you're not you're not on so- social media are you I mean you shouldn't be right it's 13 is the age limit for Facebook I imagine it's a similar one and they got a doctor here saying um, that this is at primary school level. This is Dr. Maureen Tanner Griffin. Kid. Trust me, they definitely wouldn't be on social media when they're in primary school. Oh, no doubt. But equally, if I had a kid, I'd raise it to be like, like there's no such thing as talking chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> and fire's hot and glass you shouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, just some of the fundamentals. If a man is dressed as a chicken nugget trying to lure you into a bush, he's probably a nonce. Like, stay away. Like. <laughs> and if you see a man with an eye ring, <laughs> stay very far away from him. No, but, like, this was, like, again, this is what I mean about Brass Eye. Everything that happened on Brass Eye is just coming to life, coming to real. Because they did a bit on their uh, paedophile special where they were mocking the media's hysteria over pedo Geddon, as they, they called it on the show. Uh, there's a bit where he goes, and we're looking for this man disguised as a school and it shows CCTV <laughs> footage of like a moving school you know and I, I remember watching that at the time I was buckled the press didn't get it be, and, well rather they did but they treated that show really roughly um, I remember this distinctly I, I was a teenager at the time obviously when Brass Eye was out and uh, there were certain newspapers that went after it and ran some fake stories to try and, like, put moral pressure on Chris Morris. And one of the stories claimed that paedophiles in prisons were paying up to, like, you know, a thousand pounds to get a copy of the Brass Eye paedophile special because it was so titillating, which, of course, is absolutely absurd a claim because it was broadcast on Channel 4. You know, it meets TV standards, uh, and there's nothing titillating about it. It's, it's a comedy. It's hilarious. Um, but but that that was the it was the same newspaper. I remember in that episode, and they had like some story about it was back when Charlotte Church was young, and they were like, "Yeah, bloody hell, Church, he's b- blossoming," and I like some pictures of her scantily clad or whatever, like, and she was underage, and it was like they didn't they didn't seem to grasp the juxtaposition of these two positions as absurd, you know. Because that, that's the media. They just wanted to go after somebody that was mocking the press. But anyway, the point I'm telling that story for is, look at this. Uh, it, so it goes, Dr. Griffin says, at primary school level, I've dealt with accounts set up pretending to be chicken nuggets and ice cream in order to befriend children. Another filthy pervert set up a fake social media account and posed as a road outside <laughs> the old school. What do you mean? Well, what? How? How does that work? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. How does that work? Because as soon as the road starts asking you weird questions, don't you go? Hang on, <laughs> you're not a road. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I've never had a road talk to me before. Bloody hell! That's the road outside my school. I'll follow that on Facebook. <laughs> Well, all right, girls, what's going on today? I got a minute of talking broad. You didn't say any of this yesterday when I walked across here. No, but but just just look at this. Look at this, though. Over 400 girls at the school accepted the road as a friend, and the owner of the account was a known sex offender. He made no effort to contact the girls. 
He didn't follow them or meet them in real life or wait outside the school. He just collected their photos and pictures from teenage discos, girl sleepovers, and a range of selfies. But, uh, you know, I suppose, obviously that is creepy as fuck, but, I mean, it it's a road. Like, you can set your Facebook to so people can't see your pictures and photos as well. You should probably add a sentence. You can't get added by roads. <laughs> yes. That might help. Ban yeah. all roads. But, like, who the fuck... I still don't get it. Like, like if a road tried to add me on Facebook... <laughs> I don't know any roads, do I? Don't associate with roads. So, I just thought it was like, what a mad fucking headline. And I guess, you know, it comes back to the old same story. Like, watch out, you know, for social media accounts because there are predators online. But come on, mate. This is retarded. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Yeah, look, I am friends with a chicken nugget. Like, I'm out. <laughs> Stop. Stop now. This is ridiculous. Uh, so there's that. What else did I see today that fucking uh, that caught my heart? Oh, God, no. Are you, ready for, are you ready for the roughneck sound? Are you ready for some more cringe? Thank God. No. You see, here's the thing about the, about the Democrats, right? <laughs> um, you know, they, they've got to get their shit together and I keep saying this because understand they, the reason. The reason, obviously, I had to support, in the loosest term, Donald Trump. I mean, you know, I can't really support him. I, you know, I didn't campaign for him. I didn't vote for him. I couldn't vote for him. It was just simply that once we'd distilled all of the shit and piss of the fucking, you know, uh, candidates. You were left with somehow <laughs> the cream didn't rise to the top this election. Let's put it that way. The shit nuggets did. We yeah, a few of them out. Yeah, and you were just and I certainly couldn't advocate for a known corrupt politician. I'd rather advocate for a corrupt businessman who's never had the chance to be a corrupt politician. And if people think that's an illogical choice, then you know, fuck you. You, you are stupid. Um. So. Uh, but the, the the Democratic Party, they're, they're still they haven't got anything going on at all, and all of their people are just weird and fucked up. You remember the story? You got judges who were just <laughs> like just shitting themselves. The judges, <laughs> like just parodies and pastiches of of everything that's rotten about politics. And you know, fucking, I'm a furry, but I did not have sexual relations with that fox. And just everything's just fucking so fucked up and retarded with, with, with them at the moment. It's really hard to take Democrats seriously. And then I saw this fucking, uh, campaign. Uh, this is a real, I, I swear to you, this is a real, um, campaign for Dan Helmer who's running for Congress. In Virginia, I think. Um, and uh, he decided to do a Top Gun-themed campaign video. So. And, mate, um, this is so arse-puckeringly cringeworthy. Not I mean, very modern so, as well, if you're trying to, you know, appeal to newer voters. Yeah, I think it's something to do. I think he might have served or something, so he thinks he's Tom Cruise. Tom I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, he's re- he is he is he is referencing Top Gun. Like, Hello, fellow kids. Like, uh, pretty bad. Um, but yeah, just this is really. I, I need to prepare everyone watching the show. If you thought Steven Seagal doing reggae was bad, uh, there's some comedy there. This is like the death of the soul. This entire bit. It's only a minute long, but it will kill you, and you will not want to vote for Dan Helmer. And you will wonder what the fuck anyone is thinking signing off on this shit. Um, so I'm, all right, get ready, Sam. There Helm it is. On, yeah? Right. yeah, just. Wait, right, three, two, one, go. Uh, this is real. I mean, keep in mind, this is not a parody. This is real. Yeah. Yep. 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 He's done a wordplay on Danger Zone for the yeah. film Top Gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Isn't that Congresswoman Comstock back there at the bar? Sure is. Bet you can't get her to hold a town hall. 
town hall. Of course, we're a veteran shit. Like, I was in the army, by the way. That love and feeling. No, Dan. Never hold town Fucking hall anymore hell. with constituents. <laughs> Land parenthood. Oh, what are you doing? Again. Oh. You're trying hard not to show it. But far what right, are you doing? Right, you know it. You've lost that centrist feeling. Cause you've been right wing a feeling. Oh my god. I warned you. Doesn't end there though. Nice work, Dan. <laughs> nice work, Dan. Keep it up. <laughs> Fuck off. I approve of town halls, bad singing, and this message. Democrat Dan Helmer. Saw your motherfucking head out. What is that, though? See what I mean? It's, it's killed the vibe, hasn't it? We were all having a good time. Like, and then Dan Helmer's. <laughs> Took his sunglasses off. Yeah, it's not. Nah, come on, dog. Like, what the fuck? Who's allowed him to make a fool of himself like this? Mate, Apart from part fact... two. Ah, uh, I can't. 30 seconds long. I can't, mate. Yeah, I, I, I do know. Come on. Well, I'm just. Yeah, I'll, I'm I'll see the other part. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, see, it's, it's a sign. It's not working, but it's a you sign, mate. It's not, it's not Yeah, I'm just, I'm staring at the VOD, so I'm behind, uh, obviously. To the uh, oh, this has got two. narration and everything. Now that we have your attention, uh, no, meet Democrat no, Dan don't. Helmer. <laughs> a great singer. Please. A great congressman for Virginia. Iraq and Afghanistan veteran. Road scholar, you know. business strategist, father of two. <laughs> father Dan's of two. running for Congress to bring a new generation of leadership to Washington. So let's stop Dan what from singing and doing? keep the fresh ideas. Why? why Donate what's wrong with his smile? Like, to Congress. No, it is a bit ratty. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. one of the first things that somebody look at it every time he smiles, he just God, fuck me. He looks like you know. If this was the fucking origin story for Pennywise, I'd believe it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just, look, yeah, that's out of control. <laughs> it's, it's, it's out of fucking control. Like, you can't trust that, mate. You can't trust that smile, but. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm, no one's <laughs> voting for it. <laughs> look, you laughing, mate. <laughs> No one's no one's voting for that, Ali. Like, please, like, please, but <laughs> oh, mate, that's the best one I've ever made. Yeah, well done, but you, you are a legend. Um, so yeah, just like I just want Democrats to fucking sort themselves out. You know what I mean? Let's just get some real political figures. On the democratic side of the argument, so we can start getting back to like some form of fucking sensible politics in America. You know, it's all it's just losers and fucking screeching retards and everything else. You know. Speaking of which, oh, this will fucking hurt as well. God, this will hurt. Huffington Post. I mean, so that's <laughs> we're off to a good start. Um. The headline, the powerful reason, right? You tell me how powerful this is, Sam. The powerful reason why this artist has been saving his urine for the last 200 days. Oh, my God. Well, Look at him. Right? Quote underneath, it's crazy we have to go to these extremes. I mean, you, yes, definitely, it is. you definitely don't have to. Yeah, this is but just this, crazy, actually. Yeah, yeah but, but this is the culture we're living in. So this is an artist called Casils. Who's, and and I'll, I'll just we'll read it. Someone who just gives them one name as well. You just know they're a yeah. cat. Dude, you think, yeah, well, yeah. Prince, fuck off. Or yeah, yeah. Prince, you ain't. Or symbol, you ain't. Um... So I'll just read you the article and see how see how long you can hang in there for, you know. Casil spent a good chunk of this week trying to ensure that the 200-gallon tank of urine he was installing 
uh, Ronald Feldman Fine Arts didn't leak and destroy the gallery and its important legacy. This cunt's yeah, just like stripped. Some fine this. art to me. A vat it's of piss. It's I've it's created a vat of it. piss. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine the transgender performance artist who uses all the pronouns? <laughs> Uh, what asked, do you mean? Asked me when we sat down to chat about he's just got he, him, they, and them. So are you all... always wrong? Are you yeah. always right? I bet it's always wrong. It's quantum super state uh, identity politics, where you have you have every pronoun imaginable, and so if anyone nobody, says, yeah. Yeah, 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 you can just depend on if you like that person or not. Uh, asked me when we sat down to chat about his second solo show at the New York City Gallery. The show, entitled Monumental, features a new work that he made by saving his urine for 200 days and collecting it in a tank. The piece, called Pissed, was created in response to, of course, President Donald Trump's February decision to rescind President Obama's directive that transgender students should be able to use the restroom that corresponds with their gender identity. Not quite what happened, but whatever. Pissed will be unveiled at the gallery on Saturday night when, according to a press release for the show, Casills will perform a related piece oh, called... Oh, don't say she's going to swim in it. Mate, the piece is just called Fountain. <laughs> Oh, she's swimming in the piss. She's having a swim. And thereby complete the 200-day durational performance by linking their body to the minimalist structure. Um, th- so they actually interviewed the artist. And just look at this. We talked about the logistics of preserving so much. Like, f- f- can we fuck off, please? Can we stop? C- can we just stop? And look how look how Casills came up with the idea for this. So Casills harps on about a bunch of shit, right? Like you know, look look what Trump Trump's doing. We got darker and nothing to do with the supposed um, uh, you know kind of inspiration for the piece. And when she said when the darker order was rescinded, you know what? Fuck this. I wanted everybody to do an active protest and FedEx their urine to the White House that night. I thought, let's all just flood the White House with piss. Reasonable. And the Huffington Post interviewer goes, literally. And then and then the answer is, li- yeah, literally. But I am undergoing my citizenship application and my lawyers no, said, oh my God. do how, not do that. How do they get to live in America? Come on, Trump. Slap me a visa, big man. Come on. I'm not collecting piss. I'm not pissing on the White House. Sending urine in the post is considered a biohazard, so it's an act of terrorism. <laughs> so, yeah, not going to do that. I, I, I fucking hate America and I hate Trump, but uh, I, I want my citizenship. So, yeah. So what I've done is I've kept my 200 gallons of piss in a giant vat like that blind guy from Don't Breathe. I hate my president. I hate our country. Not going to stay, please. <laughs> Mad, doesn't it? Mad these people. And then this interview's so long you think this person would have something to say. <laughs> but they don't. They don't at all. It's just the sad world of performance art, Sam. And it makes me very sad oh, inside. This is art. Come on, grow up. Collecting piss isn't art. I know there's a lot of discussion about what is and isn't art. This one hundred percent zero. No. Hundred <laughs> percent piss. <laughs> <laughs> So um, here's the thing. I want to end the show with with this one. Um, let me see if I can find it. I saw this doing the rounds. Hang on. Oh, that was an interesting one, actually. Um, I've scrolled past it. Um, people in coffee. Uh, sorry, people in California, if you make coffee or fast food, you might have to put cancer warning signs. Up on your shit. Yeah, I was like, fucking hell, that's fucking mental. It's probably because people have been saying that for a while, though, because they're like, oh, if you're going to put it on cigarettes, you put it on all the fast food. That's what's killing people. So I guess yeah, yeah. Going, all right, fine, sure. So, so this was, not one, of course. Yeah, so this was put out by the uh, Associated Press. Um, and again, you know, it, it, it relates to the these preservatives and, and whatnot that they put in the food, right? So um, 
it what was the name of the chemical? Ah, uh, God, it's in there somewhere. I think it's a fight. Um, no, the, it, it's got a name specifically. It's got a name that, that that's one particular chemical that they think is causing the cancer. Uh, ac- acrylamide, I think it is. And it's in like when you roast coffee and you make French fries. Right. It uh, it's like a carcinogen. And uh, apparently the big coffee, every, everything's big when there's a problem, you know, the big coffee. I didn't even know there was a big coffee industry, but apparently there is. You've got big tobacco and c- cigarettes are killing everyone. You know, so big coffee. But apparently, like, the, the industry's known about it for a while and has been trying to, you know, they don't want to have to acknowledge it. But now when you walk into a fucking Starbucks, like if you were buying a pack of cigarettes... They're going to have to say, yeah, this cup of coffee might cause cancer. So, How mad make is that? it a grande, fuck it. If you're walking <laughs> on ice, I might as well dance. How mad is it, though? Um, it's a, it's, it just seems so, like, uh, unnecessarily overzealous for me. Because, let's, let's be real. Right. How do you like your bacon, Sam? Crispy. Yeah. Problem there, mate. Burnt meat, is it? carcinogen, isn't it? No, oh I'm yeah, mate. It, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking professional master chef, mate. It's in the perfect crispiness. Right, so you know, you know that, you know when you get the little black bits on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight cancer. That it's what a hundred percent cancer. No, nah, like as in not hundred percent cancer. Compared obviously. to like smoking, what's the percentage? Like what? What's, you know what I mean? What's the percentage well, chance? I don't want to go into that because then I'll I'll, I'll get wrecked because you know they they did um. They've done studies that fucking show, like, you know, if you stand over a barbecue and inhale shit, it's, like, as bad as if you're, um... Oh, it's actually, that. Still yeah, it's actually, it's actually worse for you than if you're in a room where, like, loads of people are smoking or whatever. Yeah, I can believe that. You know, and obviously the, the people have seized upon that and gone on and said, ah, oh, well, that disproves passive smoking. So if you cite Definitely that study... Done you're considered a bit mentally ill, so yeah, I don't want to... How does that disprove anything? We're also not... I'm not lighting barbecues and putting them under your nose, so... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I just like to avoid it. It's like... It's like if you cite certain studies, um, you know... What, you, you and there's still people who argue that can't that smoking salt. Like, surely there's no... No, one no, no, no one's effect. saying that. I, I think there's still people out there who think passive smoking is bullshit, though. And um, I, in fact, I remember Penn and Teller did, uh, you know, Penn and Teller's bullshit did an episode about that, where they literally took the position that passive smoking was a myth. And I think the network and, and Penn and Teller had to come out and apologize afterwards. Um, Never so, really seen any evidence, but maybe it is. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I, I mean, look, California is, is a place like, you know, I've been out there a while with work and everything and um yeah obviously like everywhere you fucking go dude it's like that's how they're rolling you know everything's bad they it's very overprotective in that sense you know so but yeah i just thought like it, where does that fucking rabbit hole end do you know what i mean Everyone where, where, has to be wrapped in bubble wrap. No, mate. No making your own decisions. How, God forbid you might know that fast food is bad for you. How, God fucking hell, how would you figure that out on your own? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I, you, I want to be aware of when I eat food. I want to be aware, uh, you know, of if yeah, something's going to give me... Did you know that before, mate? I feel like I, that, everyone knows, mate. Fast food is just a flip of the coin every time. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the same as smoking, and it? it, I'm pretty sure the way smoking works is every time you smoke, it has a mm. chance to give you cancer. So it's not like it's a high chance, but obviously the more you smoke, the higher the chances you get it. So it's just the yeah. same with food. It's probably just a lower percentage. I mean, again, I, I, don't, I can't profess to have any knowledge how it works. I mean, yeah. I, you know... I, I know that I know that people who are like ah, my, my my grandmother she was a right battle act she smoked five hundred fags a day and yeah that's what they mean you can get away yeah, with yeah. it because it's just a chance of do you get the cancer or not it's literally just yeah. like a fifty fifty well not a fifty yeah. fifty but but for every one of those there's like people who just like look at Roy Castle correct um, so I don't know but I, maybe maybe for me I kind of feel that like if it is just the chemical that's the issue. Maybe you just say it contains this chemical, 
You don't have to put cancer warnings on a fucking cup of morning, Joe. Like, Mondays are bad enough, <laughs> you know? Anyway, the reason this bit's not particularly cohesive, Sam, is I was just looking uh, up something because I knew I had it in my fucking like history. You and your fucking sex robots killing people. <laughs> Let me show you something that's going to blow your mind and make you realize you made a bad bet, son. I'm going to show you. This is robots, pal. Just run this on air. I'll wait. Ain't no robots killing anyone. These cunts can't even pick up boxes. Look at this. Yeah, look, you've pulled out the dog shit robot that someone's made in their bedroom. No, this is this is high tech. This is like it one this is like some robot that like yeah, is being trying tested. to make him look like a human. Fuck all that noise. I want my robot to be like R two D two shit. I just want the most right, efficient mate, one. This robot's all over the shop, mate. Look at it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Bruh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just one brur after another. Like, would you like a cup of tea? Scalded, oh, scalded. The, the fucking scaldatron oh, five thousand. Like, Scald. Like, so, um, so there's that. All right, hang on. There was some other stuff I wanted to fucking dig off. I've got to save something right for the end. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. Cancer on your coffee cup. It's a bit much, mate. Isn't it? A bit much for me. Uh, there was this thing uh, I saw um, where, you know, cartoonists, people who draw like kids' cartoons, they try and sneak subversive stuff in. Right. Right. So there's this um, there's this show on Netflix called Maya the Bee. You ever heard of it? Maya the Bee. No. Yeah, Maya the Bee. No. And uh, it's about a cartoon bee or something. I don't know. Come Whatever on. kids are watching these days. Yeah, you've figured it all out. <laughs> well, the people who were drawing this just snuck a massive dick <laughs> it, right, on, on the wall in one of the scenes. Like, just a huge, like, proper so... comedy cock and balls. Like, have a look at that picture, mate. Let's look at the state on it, like, <laughs> and nobody noticed it, right? And it went up on fucking Netflix, and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> right next so, to Maya the Bee, like tight yeah, spot. yeah, yeah. Some fucking some parent just found like Phantom Lord's lawyer's fucking law going inside <laughs> this dog, like like it's a cock of balls, and fucking posted it up. And now Netflix have took the episode, took the episode <laughs> off. Like, fucking outrageous shit, man. I mean, yeah, that's not one of them sneaky ones where it's like you have to tilt yeah, your head yeah. on. That's a straight knob. Straight cock and <laughs> um, uh, So, yeah, a couple of other bits and then we'll bounce. Um, did you see this headline? I mean, I'm not even dignifying this with a fucking response. Um, I'm not going into this too de- too in depth, but it just shows again these these verticals, these tech verticals, these journalists that wish they were writing about something important, doing something important with their lives, right? They just wish they were better than what they are writing about crime or politics or something. So they just endlessly shoehorn their shit into video game coverage. Well, this is the headline from fucking, um, you know, Motherboard, which is the Vice uh, tech and uh, gaming vertical. And the headline just tells you all you need to know. World of Warcraft has a rape problem. Don't know. 100% doesn't. Because you can't rape across the internet. And this is over this tavern at uh, at Goldshire, and this has been around for a while and it flared up again i'll just read it right uh when clara this is obviously the made-up character name changed to protect everybody arrives at the tavern in goldshire she sees stripper dwarves and naked elves she expects cyber sex and sensual chats a little role play what she encounters are tasteless come-ons and rape fantasies oh yeah come for all shouts out a dwarf in the tavern which many World of Warcraft player passes through at least once on their journey through this massive online fantasy world. Like, this is just a thing, a legend. Like, it's just where all the erotic uh, roleplay people hang out, right? And there's, dude, there's, like, tentacles and shit and people are fucking talking about fucking each other. And, and this is, if you go there, it's just erotic roleplay. And, you know, fuck... 
rape fantasies are well within that, you know, and violent sex. Like, uh, is Fifty Shades of Grey a bestseller? Did I, did I miss a fucking meeting? So, I, you know, if you're in this part of the world, people are going to approach you and assume you're there for the live erotic role play. Right, and it's not, and and they say here, uh, she lo- uh, Clara leaves. Outside, there are other players who are waiting. They surround her mage character and spew glowing white spells into the air. An example of the kind of unwanted cyber sex that takes place in the tavern. Uh, but throwing white spells into the air, I imagine to pretend that you're jetting or something. Clara logs off. What the fuck had just happened? She discovered the rape tavern of World of War. I mean, mate, come on. It's, this can't be right, mate. This can't be how people are living. (laughs) Like, come on, guys, please. It's not a rape tavern, is it? You can leave. Um... And, and, the, and this is another push from these people. Like, people know it's an erotic role play area before you go in. Like I say, it's legendary for that. I don't play World of Warcraft. I never got into World of Warcraft. I didn't even play vanilla. Like, I bailed on it. I just thought it was boring. And I was just sick and tired of all the cunts. Actually, the game starts when you hit level 60 or, you know, whatever it was back then. Fucking, what are they up to now? Like, level 110 or something? I don't know. Um, I, 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 I'm like, what? So what? I've got to sink like half my life into this game for the game to begin. Now, fuck you! I'm tapping out. I'm out. <laughs> um, you know, I just couldn't justify it. But they, they say here, we, uh, we want to, you know, put pressure on Blizzard. We just don't get any help when we complain about this. Well, what do you want them to do? Shut down the tavern, I suppose. So, and it's apparently made all the worse because like Blizzard are aware of it, you know, and, and, and they patrol it to make sure it doesn't go too far. So it just sounds like, I don't know, it doesn't sound all that bad, does it? Like people firing white spells at you going, come for all, are you horny? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving, I'm, you're all weird as fuck. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah. exactly what I do. Well, time to go play the actual game because you're all fucking weird. There you go. See, people in the chat saying I'm 110 and and still depressed, hate my life, still playing it. It's a shit game, reasonable. So, go to the uh, Have a wank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love again, again. Check out the old tavern. Um, so, yeah, so well, it looks like these magazines are still going after fucking gamers. You know how it is. Um, the gamers, we gotta got to go after them because they're evil and misogynists and what not so yeah so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the show uh we'll end it here i think and we'll go chill we got a vod out we've streamed it's coming up to five o'clock so i can enjoy the rest of my evening in peace for a change um but i just want to show you something remember when i said the 2k games yeah had the biggest amount of bullshit (laughs) going on I'd, i'd ever seen right well i i got linked to this clip the other day on the new Madden game. And I have literally never seen anything like <laughs> Mate, I am kidding you. If you thought that fucking scene where they're just constantly like spamming it off the backboard was bad, this is unreal. Now, I will add that the Twitter account is unfortunately named, but that doesn't change the brilliance of the clip. Well, hang on, do you want me to remove it? The name? Yeah, hang on. Let me have a hacker man real quick and I can remove it. All right, do it. Get in there. He's your hacker man. Hacker man. Hacker man. Well, well. Delete that part. Oh, I fucked it. (laughs) God. (laughs) This is effort. Like, I got to scroll it out the way. There we go. Yeah, just have a scroll. Like, why are you even doing hacking? I don't know. Right. 
So again, this is a free to one. Yeah, yeah, this is a free to one. Just play this. Well, it's it's got commentary as well if you want to play yeah. the audio. Right. There, there may there may be some bad words in the audio. Just prepare it. All right, three, two, one, go. Bullshit. How the fuck does this happen online? How the fuck what? does this shit happen online? <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? It's so good with my- what uh, in the <laughs> hell was that? This nigga scored. <laughs> what, what the fuck, fuck was up. that? He's furious. Play that again, mate. It's yeah, unreal. Really. How the fuck does this happen online? It's so unreal. Fumble How the on the fuck fucking one yard line. Does this line. shit last happen last time. online? Last time. Truly last time. What the on, fuck time. is this shit? What in the hell was that? This nigga scored. What the fuck was that? (laughs) Fucking bullshit. Man, I'd be tamping like he's covered in Vaseline. (laughs) That that would stab me fucking done. Like, so there you have it. Uh, we can kill the show and then we'll go through that VOD and edit out all the stuff. We were four subs from a t-shirt giveaway, Sam. We, yeah. We're nearly back. Almost got up there. So I guess maybe we do a short tomorrow and if the, you know if anything happens in the world between now and then, which I'm sure it will. Because right. I, I want to talk about my famous namesake. You know, Richard Lewis is fucking doing the rounds at the moment. For what? Has he got a new TV show or something? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. He he did this uh, Legends of Comedy thing that was on a TV right. show. Which uh, look, I'll be honest, I got nothing against Richard Lewis. Yeah, definitely, definitely. A uh, yeah, you know he, he's got his part in history. He's like I don't know where he'd be uh, in a top one hundred for me. Yeah, but definitely got a place. Yeah, probably. Um, you know, and it's not like I never really like like massively rated him. You know, I don't massively rate him or anything, but you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, get him to talk about comedy and all that, right? Brilliant. But he's been doing all these other things, mate. Just lately, like he went on the fucking Ruben report the other day, right. and he did this like mad interview. I watched it. I'm like, wow. Like, I don't think he's well. Like, he was on Sports Center last night. Uh, he did this interview with Vice, which is one of the weirdest things I've ever read, and. The problem with it is every time Richard Lewis is doing this shit, I get fucking messaged. <laughs> My Twitter gets spammed like a yeah, motherfucker. Some free interactions for you, mate. Nice guy. Yeah. Well, no, but it's not though because they're all abusive. Look, let me. Yeah. Apparently, the reason he's doing it is because Kirby Enthusiasm Season Nine is coming out, so that's why he's doing all this promo shit. But no excuse right. to why he's lost his box. Yeah, but, like, just look at this, like, hang on, let me just show you this thing. Um, I got a tweet, to th- th- I was, st- I didn't understand what was going on. I, he, he fucking, where, where the fuck is it? Has he deleted it now? No, of course he hasn't. No couldn't ever correct it either. So, this guy, fucking, just look at this tweet here, Sam. He said to me, um... Don't take this the wrong way, but watching you on Sports Center or SCESPN, whichever, you look fucking ridiculous. I'm like, what? It's not even. It's not even me. (laughs) I've deliberately called myself like I could have had any Twitter handle. Could have been real Richard Lewis, but I thought, do you know what? He was there first. (laughs) Fair play. You were born first. Yeah, he was there first. So yeah, he can be the real one if he wants. Right. But every time this motherfucker. you know what I mean? Every time he sticks his head up, it's like, listen, great, you're on Kirby Enthusiasm, brilliant. Like, come on, though, you don't need to be on everything else, do you? Because every time he does, I got Facebook messages, mate, from lifelong fans of his telling me how he changed their lives. <laughs> and then it's like, what do I do? Do I reply? Do I say, oh, I'm Thank not him, you. sorry? Or do I just style it out and go, oh, yeah. You're welcome. I'm in a quandary, mate. Why is he even I mean, on ESPN and Sports Center if he's promoting I, Curb? Why is he on I, sport I, shows? I don't know, mate. What a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. So he's always a yeah. bit eccentric. Yeah, but that, that, yeah. So I think I think what we'll do is we'll we'll talk about that tomorrow probably because it is weird, mate. 
And also as well, just one more tweet to show off from someone called Awesome Source Zero, guessing you couldn't get the Awesome Source handle. Probably should have, I don't know, just come up with something better. But look, see, Richard Lewis reports was right. It's a clip from a thing from the Human Rights All Watch right. at The Guardian saying that the Qatari World Cup workers face life-threatening heat. <laughs> They're not kidding. Um, and hundreds are just dying every year building these stadiums for the 2022 World Cup. So report that's coming out. So looking forward to that. Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, we'll talk about Richard Lewis and the the other Richard, the real Richard Lewis. And, oh, and I've got another mad story to tell because I've been working on this. I've been working on a proper piece of journalism uh, about a serial scam artist who we think is called Chris King, but we don't know. But this is it, this is a mental story. I mean, it really is. It's a banger, mate. He's stolen from co-workers. He was trying to blackmail a weeb comic book maker right. called Merry Weathery. He was blackmailing him into paying $100 a month to stop people from harassing him online, uh, which he was creating. And the other thing is, this guy has a thirty-six thousand uh, dollar GoFundMe, supposedly for ca- cancer, which just got took down. Right. So it's mental. <laughs> so I'll probably talk a little bit about that too. Um, so there you have it. So anyway, yeah, well, we'll go, we'll go. So hope hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the show as always. Thanks a lot for tuning in to all the people who served and donated and all of that stuff. And uh, do, do you have anything to say, Sam, before we bounce? Um, watch out for those sex robots because they'll get. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. If, right, remember, we're going to be doing this show for ten years. I'm confident and... it'll be that bet will be over within three. I reckon man. you'll be fucking robots by before the end of 2020, <laughs> man. You think I'll be fucking a sex robot? Yeah, hundred percent. No chance. Hundred percent, mate. I think you've severely underestimated the power of AI, mate. Shit can go <laughs> go foul real quick. So all it takes um, is one guy making his own robot. That counts as well. If he's made his own robot and he tries fucking in, it chokes him to death. That's also <laughs> you fucking a robot, mate. It's never happening, Sam. Uh, you, p- 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 people are mental. Right, so you go anyway. You uh, all take care of yourselves, friendos, and we'll uh, we'll probably see you tomorrow at a similar time. Take care.